Hello and welcome to lecture 26 of Math 2R03. In today's lecture, we're going to jump back to chapter 6 of the textbook where we're going to be looking at inner product spaces. And when we look at this material in chapter 6, I want you to think back to some of the material you would have seen in Math 1B03 or 2LA3 if you took it, namely the dot product. Right? So if you remember what the dot product of two vectors was, if you had a vector u1 to un in Rn and a vector v, v1 to vn in Rn, then the dot product is a number that you get by taking the first coordinates and multiplying it. So u1 times v1 and then u2 times v2 all the way up to un times vn. So this was the dot product and the norm of that uh, of a single vector was defined to be the square root of v dotted with itself. So you would take the dot product of v and then uh, and then take the square root. So the goal in chapter six is to introduce inner product spaces. So what our goal is to actually is to introduce kind of an operation similar to the dot product on a vector space that has similar properties. Okay, so we're going to, let me finish the sentence, we're going to introduce vector spaces with operations like a dot product so we can define a norm. So that's kind of our kind of our goal in chapter six, is to define vector spaces with a special type of operation called an inner product. And then once you have an inner product, you can define a norm. So let me make myself disappear. And we'll actually first start by defining the type of operations that we're interested in. And those uh, operations are called inner products. So an inner product on a vector space is a function that takes an ordered pair. So ordered is important here. So ordered means that there's a first element and a second element, u, v, with u and v in our vector space, and maps this pair to a number u, uh, and this is the way we write this number. So we have the angle brackets, u, comma, v, and f. So you want to think about taking uh, a pair of vectors and you're mapping it to a number inside of your field. So either the reals or the complex numbers such that the following properties are all true. The first property is the positivity. Okay, and what that means is that uh, you get a number that's greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so um, IE, this number is a real number so you don't take it to uh, this number, even though it's mapped to a field, if it's a complex number, you still get a real number and positive. So that's the first property that we have. Uh, we have what's called definiteness, which says that the only time the uh, inner product takes uh, V and itself to zero is if the vector V was zero. Okay, we have addition in the first slot. So notice that there's two slots, right? And inner products, the order is important. So we have addition in the first slot, which means that if we take V plus W comma U, it's the same thing as taking the inner product of V and U plus the inner product of W and U. So we have this property in the first coordinate. We have homogeneity in the first slot, which is similar that we can pull out scalars. Okay, we can pull out the scalar if it's in the first slot. And the last property that we have is what's called the conjugate similarity. So this is where we kind of have to really pay attention to the order because if you have UV, it gets sent to one number, but if you were to switch the order around, what you would get would be the complex conjugate of the number that you started with, right? So this is the complex conjugate. So this is what we would call an inner product. It's a function that has these five properties. And we will see some examples uh, in the next part of today's lecture. But just let me just point out a couple things. First of all, 
if our field had been the real numbers, then the last condition is really just saying that you can switch the order around. All right, and the reason that you can do that, if let me just show you the last condition again. The last condition was that when you switch the order around, you get the complex conjugate. But because this is a real number, the complex conjugate of a real number is just that number itself. Okay, so that's why that's true. And you, you may wonder, why do we even need that uh, condition number five, right? Why is it the case that we can't have the uh, inner product of uv uh, equal to the inner product of vu? Why do we actually have to introduce what looks like a new level of complexity? Well, this is what would happen if you were to allow this property over the complex numbers, right? So we can take any, we can take any non-zero here, let me put this here. For any non-zero vector, right, we have that i u comma i u, where i is a scalar. We know that this is greater than zero. This is by number two and number one. Okay, and why is that? Because we're looking at uh, a vector, and the only time that it goes to zero is if the vector is the zero vector. So i times u is not the zero vector. So we know that it has to be strictly positive by number two and number one. And property number four tells me that this is equal to i times u times i u. This is by number four, the homogeneity in the first line. And then this is where things would be kind of mess things up if we were to allow the, uh, this condition right here. So this would say that, well, this is also equal to this. If we allowed the swapping of the order of our inner product, so if we allowed this, but then the homogeneity says, well, you can pull that out, the i again, so we, we can pull the i out of the first coordinate, so we get the inner product of i squared uh, times the inner product of u with itself. And this is equal to minus 1. And then the inner product of u with itself. And so this has to be less than or equal to, well, actually, it's going to be strictly less than 0. Okay, And the reason that is is because this inner product of u with itself is positive, but we're mining it to minus 1. So look at what we have. 0 is strictly less than 0. So this is a contradiction. Right? And the reason that we were led to a contradiction is because we allowed this, right? So uv cannot equal vu if f is the complex numbers. Okay, so that just hopefully gives you some explanation. And this is kind of a big difference between what you would have seen in maybe math 2LA3. We talked very briefly uh, when you talked about uh, the dot product. So this is why we have to pay very special attention when we're dealing with complex numbers and inner products. Okay, in the next part of today's lecture, I'll give some examples.